This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey guys, Culture here. Today we're going to be talking about lying. More specifically, we'll figure out if you can spot a liar and why we feel the need to lie in the first place. People lie to make others think they're more rad than they really are. So many times I've been on a date and the girl will start making stuff up just to impress me. Like, girl, you think I didn't stalk your Instagram for two hours before this date? In your Facebook? Your LinkedIn? Who's still using Friendster? Is that even a thing anymore? Looking back now, that was the first red flag. Well, Crash is absolutely right, for once. Certainly, people lie to make themselves seem more accomplished, more attractive, more interesting, smarter, sportier, sexier, even. Mmm, more of that, please. But there are way more reasons people lie. Most of them are straight up harmful, like if you lie out of spite, trying to ruin someone's confidence, or downplay their achievements because you're jealous. Or people who lie to cover up their actions, from the cute lying of mischief of his children, all the way up to lying under oath in a federal court. In fact, some people lie just for the fun of it, a phenomenon called duping delight, like those losers who call in fake bomb threats and then parade around the panic they caused for attention. Yeah, I, I hate those people. I, I would never do that anymore. Most people would agree lying is a bad thing. Dishonesty ruins trust, it misleads and misinforms people. It's only used when the liar wants to reject reality. And reality is... Well, reality. It's the one thing we should be able to rely on. And yet, the issue isn't so simple as all that. Our society is built on lies. On a grand scale, we have politics, where politicians need to fib to appease different groups or allay the public's concern. And marketing, where advertisers need to lie to make their product seem more attractive than the competition. Big business, greedy fat cats, other things people say to rag on companies. I just hate capitalism. No, you don't. No, no, I don't. That was also a lie born out of my jealousy for those brilliant white-collar CEOs. Let me live like you for just one day! I don't care how many sweatshops I have to own, I have no morals! I'm the perfect candidate! It's not just big corporations that lie in a socially permissible way. We do it every day in our regular relationships. In fact, it's commonly stated that the average person lies one to two times per day, and the average person is lied to about 10 to 200 times a day. You're telling me that people are lying a couple hundred times to me every day? I mean, you're far from the average person, but yeah. Ouch. You know, you could afford to lie a bit more. And that is exactly my point. Part of the reason there are so many lies is because not all lies are malicious. We have white lies, lies made because you have someone else's best interest at heart. Now, of course, that doesn't mean white lies are always what the other person wants, but in some situations, you'd be super happy that someone lied to you. Imagine you're at an assembly or a big social function and you're nervous as heck because you have to give a speech. You turn to your friend and ask them if your speech is good. Well, your friend now has two options. One, tell you that your speech needs some improvement when you're only five minutes away from getting up on stage, thus ruining your confidence and not giving you enough time to fix your speech. Or two, Lie and say your speech is great, giving you the reassurance you need and allowing you to deliver the speech to the best of your ability. You might think you want the truth in that moment, but you don't. What you're actually asking for is approval, and a true friend will give you that. Huh. That story reminds me of something. Does it now? Maybe a wedding we went to? Maybe I was the best man, you were a gatecrasher, and despite me vouching for you and getting you a seat at the table, you spent the whole time ripping my speech to shreds. And then I got up on stage, sweat through my suit, and stumbled through the whole speech. Hmm. Nah, that's not it. Ugh. Anyway, there are a million examples of these white lies. Love your haircut. Your baby is so cute. Or even something as simple as, it was nice meeting you. They might be lies, yes, but it's also about being polite. You're way more likely to lie to strangers for that exact reason. Etiquette. Some harsh truths we would only want to hear from our closest friends, not some random guy screaming from across the street. Really? I'm just trying to be helpful, though. The stripes don't make you look skinny. You're not fooling anyone. You just look like a zebra hooked up to an air compressor. See? Just plain rude. And of course, we now live in an age where lying can be done more casually than ever, making use of our technological advancements to forge, undermine, and deceive. What I mean is, you don't have to lie to someone's face anymore. Just the fact that they can't see you or your face is the perfect template for deceit. How many times have you texted something like, I can't make it, sorry, I'm busy, or on my way now, when you're not busy and, quite frankly, you're still 20 minutes away from being even close to leaving your house? 
These types of lies where the other person can't see you are called butlers, because back in the day, the butler would inform a guest of their master's whereabouts and shoo away unwanted visitors. I always wanted to be a butler. With their little suits, they just look so cute. And besides, then I could steal master's silver while he's not looking. I blame it on the maid, of course. An easy lie to believe because everyone knows she's having an affair with the groundskeeper. Someone's been watching a little too much Downton Abbey. But you know what, Crash? If you really want to pick up something new, why don't you try Skillshare, our sponsor for this episode. Skillshare is an online learning community where you'll find classes covering everything from animation to writing to photography. If you want to pick up a creative hobby, start your own business or discover yourself, then Skillshare is the place to do exactly that. There's a great class called Filmmaking for All, Tell Your Story Through Video, taught by Dan Mace, which really gets you thinking about how to craft a personal story in visual form. And that's not just philosophical either, Dan really gets into the practical side of shooting and editing your video together too. If you want to join a community of like-minded creative people, then it's only $10 a month for an annual subscription. Or check out the link in the description of this video. The first 1,000 people to click the link will get a free trial of Skillshare so you can cruise the classes and see what suits you. Give it a go. I actually use Skillshare to learn animation. I'm drawing me right now. Whoa, this feels weird. Crash, please, your fourth wall breaking is invalidating our whole review. Speaking of which, another popular technological lie is called sock puppeting, where you write a glowing review for your own work under a pseudonym. Anonymous forums make this even easier, essentially carpet bombing sites with fake reviews and links to your own content to drum up business. Now imagine you have the money to buy a bunch of workers who will write these fake reviews for you, increasing the deceit many fold. In China, this practice of hiring pandering ghostwriting mercenaries has become such a big deal that the term internet water army or Chinese water army is being used to refer to this large-scale corporate fraud. How do you even combat that? Well, first off, you get 300 kilograms of strawberry jam. It was a rhetorical question. My point is, lying is everywhere and it's not going away anytime soon. So all you can do is learn to defend yourself against it. Oddly, that sentiment also applies to my relationship with Crash. We're friends to the end, remember? Terrifying. If you want to defend yourself from liars and cheats, it'd be fantastic if there was a surefire way to spot a liar. Most studies show that the average person is trash at detecting lies, only successfully sniffing out subterfuge about 54% of the time. Keep in mind, by pure chance, you'd guess right 50% of the time. Also, it's actually harder to judge if a friend is lying than a complete stranger. But of course, that makes sense when you consider that you're far more suspicious of a stranger, so your brain is on high alert for deception. By the way, if you haven't watched Would I Lie To You, it's a fantastic show for testing your lie-detecting skills. Speaking of games, I was thinking we could play a little game ourselves, Crash. Ooh, <laughs> spicy! I love playing games with you. Why do you have to make everything sound weird? The game's simple. I'll give some common cues that signal someone is lying, and the audience can try to guess which signal indicates the lie. For example, do you think someone's vocal pitch goes up or down when they're lying? I have no idea. Crash, did you take a dump in my ensuite? No, I would never do that. Whoa, that was much more pronounced than I was expecting. But as you saw, people's pitch usually drops when they're lying. Now, how about contractions? Do people use more or less contractions when they're lying? Surely they use just as many contractions as it takes to get the baby out. Ugh, God. I meant when you shorten two words into one word. Once again, let's test on Crash. Did you eat the cat food I gave you when you were supposed to feed the neighbor's cat? You are mistaken. It is certain I did not, could not, and would not eat the food belonging to the cat. Huh, you actually sounded somewhat sophisticated there. Yep, definitely less contractions means more lies. One last test, but this time I'm not warning you what the signal is. Crash, once and for all, did you take the cookie from the cookie jar? No, of course not. I remember the incident well. It was October 17th at just past noon. As the sun rose into the sky, the glare through the kitchen window finally disappeared, allowing me full, unshielded view of the blue and white cookie jar. The lid had been left askew at an angle of 30 degrees while 17 crumbs of varying sizes were scattered around the base. Anyone at home notice the telltale sign of a lie? Yup, that's it. Superfluous details are another great indicator of lying. There are a bunch more, though. People who lie tend to use distancing language, separating themselves from the incident. They tend to use less exclusionary words and phrases, which describe what didn't happen rather than what did happen. And they tend to use more negative words and put themselves down while lying. Now, of course, none of these signs by themselves are surefire indicators of a lie, but lie spotters and interrogators try to get people to tell their story as many times as possible and in as much detail as possible. That way, the liar is more likely to trip up and exhibit more of these signs. 
People suck at telling their made-up accounts out of order, or realistically describing spatial information for a space that they've never visited. That's why whenever I'm brought down to the station, I just shut my pie hole and wait for my lawyer. That's what my dad taught me. That's the only thing he taught me. You can give away plenty without saying a word though, you know. Subconscious physical signals leak out all the time. We place our hands on top of things we don't want people to see, we point our feet towards the nearest exit, and we make more eye contact because we're trying to see if the other party is buying our lie. One of the creepiest signals is that we occasionally actually smile when we're lying and we think we've gotten away with it. Humans are just nasty little creatures, really. I'm a master of my body. I don't let anything show that I don't want people to see. You know your fly is undone, right? I don't let anything show that I don't want people to see. Ew. The weird thing is that we still haven't been able to invent a method of telling if someone is definitively telling a lie or not. At least none that are reliable enough to be admissible in court. In saying that though, there are some methods in use that have a high degree of reliability as long as the test subject hasn't trained to beat them. Polygraphs, eye tracking, brain scanning. My personal favourite is infrared scanning of the face to detect blood flow. Funnily enough, when someone is lying, blood flows out of their cheeks and to their nose, like a real-life Pinocchio effect. I have something that grows longer every time I lie. Please don't. The list of things I have to remember. Oh? Well, yeah, I mean, lying all the time? It's a burden, you know? To keep the lie alive, I have to remember all this stupid stuff I said and keep it all consistent, and I just get tangled up in my own web of lies. Sometimes. Sometimes I begin to believe them myself. Lying to yourself is the worst thing you can do. When you deny your own reality, it prevents you from changing. Instead of trying to shift blame onto other people or sweet talk your way out of self-doubt, focus on your actions. Have you done what you say you've done? And do you do what you say you're going to do? Are you actually who you present yourself to be? Are you a man of your word? Because if not, you'll always get caught out eventually. Be true to yourself. Crash, I'm really happy to hear you say that you're finally going to stop lying. What? No, I never said that. But weren't you just saying how much of a burden lying is? Well, yeah, but that's part of the challenge. How long can I keep this up? How high can I stack that house of cards? How much tighter can I wind this piece of string? How much harder can I push this jet ski? That last one isn't even an expression. I want to see how far I can go. And then when it all blows up in my face, well, that's going to be pretty dang spectacular. Please just don't let me be there when it happens. I'm saving a special seat just for you. See you all soon!